Welcome to Face to Facts. I am Nick Face, back in the hot seat. Same as Phil Haley, also to the hot seat to my left today. How are you? Doing all right. How are you doing, man? I'm good. It's amazing. It's December now. It is. December the 1st. Today. 25 days to Christmas. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Well, one of the things that we want to go over today with all of you is a little bit more in depth on the Celtics. The Celtics are, again, mm. still doing great things. Uh, we have the Patriots still doing great things. Mm. And then we also want to get into a little bit of the Red Sox today because mm. the hot stove is burning right now and it's time to figure out maybe which direction the team should go. So I want to kick it off first uh, with the Celtics. The Celtics just closed out another great victory against an up-and-coming Philadelphia 76ers team. They had a final score last night of 108. I think it was 108 to like 108 to 97, 98, 97, something 98, like that. Yeah. Another outstanding performance from Kyrie Irving. Yeah. Really making people that were big Isaiah Thomas fans kind of forget about Isaiah a little bit. It's, it's definitely Kyrie territory right now. Just a little bit of an overview on what you have seen the past couple weeks on the Celtics. Oh, I think we talked about the last show too, but uh, yeah, I, uh, their rebounding um, is, is pretty good. Some would say it's better than last year. Mm -hmm. The rebounding for the last couple of years has been the thing that's really killed them. Has been. Yeah. Uh, but like I said to you off air right before we were going to shoot, I, I think, I don't have a crazy hot take, but I actually think they're leveling off a bit. Like, I think they're going to find their... Because Joel... It was a nice win last night, but, I mean, Joel Embiid didn't play. Mm -hmm. And, like, you still had Philadelphia kind of doing a lot of things that uh, you couldn't stop it sometimes. And maybe Alvin Gentry had a bad night. Did uh, I just have a question for oh, you sure. as you continue. Did Charles Barkley give you a call in the past week? <laughs> He did. We if, had a nice discussion. If any um, of you haven't seen our last show, we had yeah. quite a roasting of Charles Barkley. Yeah, a moderate. Charles Barkley called out the Celtics the he last did. show that we did, saying that they really haven't hit their spot. They're not that good. They're an average team. They're nothing. Yeah, I think they're, I, and I think may, he might have been, as I went off a little bit on him or I just kind of disagreed with him, I might be agreeing with him a little more now. Yeah. As far as like they might be leveling off or like, you know, it, everything's reaching that tipping point. I think they use the Gordon Haywood uh, injury as a good kind of springboard to for this great start. That I, mean, I totally agree. Yeah. With. I, yes. I think that's fueled them in a lot of ways. But they also, rallied around after Gordon got hurt. Yeah, yeah, most definitely. And I think this team probably you're looking at a third or fourth seed, maybe. maybe, I may, Hey, maybe they're at the top of the heat. Maybe not. But it's like this la these last couple games. Well, the Orlando game that kind of wiped the floor with them mm -hmm. last. I don't. Did we talk in between? I don't think we did. I don't think we. I don't think we between. have. No, we have not. Well, right. It was right before the streak ended. Yeah. In Miami. We we were on that streak, which lasted. Yeah. Was it 17 games or 18? Uh, I think it lasted 16 or 17. It might have been 17. I think it was 17. I don't mean that. The um, I I just really want to see the Celtics come out and show everybody that they can be champions this year. Yeah. And for whatever reason, when some somebody another player goes down or. I think the I think the Celtics have the Patriots mentality right now. It's the next sure. man up, and I think the young kids that are in that's Brown and that's uh, Tatum. Tatum and even Rozier and all that crew Rozier. that's together has really kind of jumped on the backs of Kyrie and Al Horford yeah. to really, in a way, rejuvenize this team to say, hey, this is what our goal is. Let's do this. Yeah. I think they all understand what the definition of a team is. I don't think there's any selfishness on this team. I think they're class acts, and I think that's hard to find in the NBA right now. And yeah, you can. I think that's due a to their due to due yeah. to their team. I think that there was an interview yesterday on Felger and Maz, and they had uh, the one of the owners of the Celtics, Wink Grosbeck, was on, and Felger and Maz kept asking, "What do you think about this team? This team looks great. This team is doing great. What is your expectation?" And his expectation is. He doesn't think they're that great. He thinks they're just another team that's out there that really has rallied around uh, from the injury being down, played great. But he doesn't qualify themselves as a top six team. And I think that's absolutely banana land. Yeah, he could be. But, like, he could be right. He could be right. He as, could be right. Do we want far? him to be right? No. no. I don't want him. I don't, I don't want, want the him Celtics to be right. <laughs> no, I don't no. either. And I think the Celtics could be a good... I think they can make it to the second, maybe even the Eastern Conference Finals. Mm -hmm. And I, I think they falter against Cleveland or, let's say... Uh, you don't think that they can still get past Cleveland? I don't think anyone in the East can get... I, 
wait until we get to like March or April. Then because we'll I see. personally don't think Isaiah Thomas will be back this year. I think he'll be back. Whether he's like the player he was last year is a whole other bag of bones. He but, can say all he wants until yeah. I'm blue in the face or he's blue in the face or whatever. Well, you and need, I just don't like. You need to see evidence from him that he'll be back. I need, I need, to need see evidence things. from. Yes. Yeah, I think we're both in that same. We, I, I'm one of those visual learners. Sure. I, I need to see something to believe it. Sometimes. Well, yeah, I mean, I think we could take it at face value what he's saying, his progress, but I mean, right. until he gets out there and plays, I think it's another thing. And I think he'll be a great addition. I think that's kind of nuts. Uh, and Derek Rhodes is another big distraction or something. But I mean, kind of isn't. Like, how much of I an just impact think the was he are a big distraction. I just think that's them right now. I just think that their owner is a boob. Yeah, a <laughs> I, think Fair, that, yeah. I think that they've ruined LeBron in a way where he's just yeah. thinking he's, he's done and he's going to look elsewhere. Um, he, I think he's on his last legs in Cleveland, personally. Sure. Oh, I'm, I'm sure I really is. do. But I don't. Do you think that's more a byproduct of just LeBron being LeBron, or Danny Ferry's bumbling of things? I, I think that LeBron has an ego that's bigger this, as big as this world. Sure. And I think that he was looking for X, Y, and Z to make things happen for maybe players coming in or help. Yeah. And I did think the owner said, "No, we're not going to do that. We're done." Well, I mean. And as an owner, I can understand that. Yeah, because if he's if he won't guarantee him that he's going to be there the next year, like what do you, what's he going to do? It's like no, I'm not going to do, I'm not going to saddle myself with a contract with someone either aging Derrick Rose, which is already blowing up in their face. Of course it is. Or uh, you know anyone else they want to tag along. But I will say this: over the last like handful of years since LeBron's been back in Cleveland, there's always been tumult. There's always been uh, this tumultuous relationship. Uh, between him and the the Cavs, uh, be it whatever coaches there, ownership, whatever, and even when they won the championship uh, against Golden State two years ago, like that was at the height. I would like to imagine of their craziness. I mean, maybe you could say the height was this past summer when Kyrie wanted out, mm-hmm. but they still won. I I think the most there's no that's that distraction is nothing. Like t- talk to me when they get we get to the playoffs, and when you have LeBron there. I mean, I know he could quit. The thing that would this is the thing that you could make the argument for that they're done if he pulls a quit because he's quit before he on Cleveland. This past week, we saw the return to Avery Bradley to the Garden. That's right. Against, um, against his, his team, yeah, which is Houston, right? No, he's on uh, Detroit. And Detroit, Detroit. And Pistons, they got they right. got beat. They got beat. Uh, South just got beat, not handily, but they got beat. You know, kind of. Avery got Bradley, beat. the got beat. Um, resurgence of. Uh, what's his Andre name? Andre Drummond. Yep, Andre Drummond now was just free throws. amazing. He, yeah. he has turned his career around. But so that far, was the trade. A it was season. Avery Bradley for Marcus Morris, and it was more That's of a salary run. dump for the Celtics. Yeah. yeah. It was. And Marcus Morris has been very good. I love him. You know, I was He's a big good. Avery Bradley fan. He was probably my number one guy one from the favorites. team last year. Outside of, uh, you know, Isaiah and everything. Yeah. Avery Bradley just played the game the right way. And it was nice to see him return back to the Garden and all yeah. and beat his old team. Yeah, it was. I'm sure Emotions it was good for him. High. I'm sure, he, oh, sure he appreciated it. I'm sure he did. They gave him a nice little celebration and for all should. the things he's done. And they just should. Class act. Now, what do you. Oh, sorry. Just to, to, to harp on that last point. And what do you. The thing I feel like Green, green Teamers, quote unquote, loved him to a fault, I think, Avery Bradley, but he was one of my favorite guys. Yep. And I loved him because he was a two way player. But he also signified for me, he was the last guy. Of kind of that big three year, really, that was on the team, if yeah. you think about it. Yeah. And uh, even though he came in really late, what before it really, like a season before it blew up, it got blown up. And Allen left, and I, I think like other players just kind of went. He was one of the but last, the last dominoes. Guy. Yeah. Yep. And that's kind of, that's a sad, I don't know, to me, as a sentimentalist, it's kind of a sad, uh, it was a sad I, I just thing, look man. at that team still, and as we just said earlier, only one championship. Uh, like, hey, I'm with him, man. I loved him, but you're right. One championship. You can. People get. And you know what? Who would you Who would you take? That big three or the LeBron big three? LeBron's. I mean, they they LeBron's. won. They won. They won more. They went to three, and they, they went won to two. three and won two. Actually, did they go to four? No, they went to four. Actually, they went they? to four. That's right. They, they went to four. Actually. Yeah. So you. That's a no-brainer. Oh, yeah. A no-brainer. I mean, they went to the seeds. Went to two. They could have gone to three, and I think they could have won two out of three. Yeah. And they almost won. In L.A. They, they came down to the too. last uh, minute or two. So, all these good things with the Celtics going on, we hope you get a chance to enjoy them yeah. and continue to root for those Celtics. Every continue. game. That's right. Every game is a game. Every game is fun. We still got to root for the Patriots. That's right. It's a good transition into talking about them. 
I want to ask you before we even have a discussion about the team, mm -hmm. before we d discuss it, because we talked about it the last time when we were here. We talked about when they played the Raiders. Looking at everything that they've done so far this season and looking ahead at their schedule, am I out of my mind to not see the Patriots back in the Super Bowl this year? No, of course not. Okay. I, I think they're always a perennial favorite. Like, they're a safe choice regardless. Yep. Because of their pedigree and just like, uh, their pedigree, yeah. Just like what they've done, who they are, and how they uh, present themselves. But I will say, as much guff as uh, Mike Tomlin is getting, uh, I think he's doing the right thing for his team, saying that like they're going to go in there, that fireworks, you know, fireworks, quote unquote, they got to beat them. It's going to set up the next match. It's all right, and it's all fueling what they're doing. Do I think Steelers can do it? I don't know. I think they're a very talented team. Mm -hmm. And if they just get their head out of their uh, keister, they could probably beat them. If they just scheme correctly. I'm looking at the team, and I see zero competition. Wow, really? Zero. Anywhere. Anywhere. Until they get to the Super Bowl. Zero. You might. You might they might steamroll. Over, I'm, or I'm steamroll, just, just watching the product of what the NFL is yeah. for the past time, following fantasy and following all the games. No one holds a candle to the Patriots right now. Nobody. No one in the AFC? Nobody. Nobody in the AFC holds a candle. Everybody was talking. Everybody's got this thing with the Steelers and everything. The Steelers have never beat the Patriots with Tom Brady as their quarterback. Never. No, they have. When was it? It was uh, when, uh, I think, 2003-2004, when they had that streak going of like 23 games in a row. I'm, I'm talking first... playoff game. Playoff game. Playoff game. No, but that year they did actually beat them in the AFC um, championship in Pittsburgh. Okay. I'm, yeah, I, I'm with you in the fact like... Come Matt Castle time. in 08 was the one that lost. It's, that is another one, yeah. They've Matt lost, Castle lost. I think they've lost two or three times under the Belichick Brady era. Yep. And, and that think. was not when Tomlin was the coach either. That was when oh. uh, Cower, Bill was Cower was the season? coach as well. Yeah. I don't see any problems with the Patriots, knock on wood, <laughs> so long as health continues okay. yeah. well, to... There you go. Mark their way back to the Super Bowl. So I'm, um, I'm in a way looking at which opponent it might be, because be in the Super Bowl. Oh, okay. In the Super Bowl. What do you want to just start well, with? I'm the just AFC? very confident with it. No, but I mean, who do you think they'll face if they? Uh, get I think it's the Steelers. I honestly think it's going to be the Steelers. What about the divisional game? What do you think? I think the divisional game will match up. It could be. Who do you think's getting in? I think I think the Patriots might actually play Jacksonville. I would like to see that. Might happen. Might happen because so Jacksonville, I think, could get by in that wild card weekend yeah. when they play and all. Um, I think the divisional game could be a Jacksonville. And I like Jacksonville's team. They have the best, one of the best defenses in the NFL, yep. which I, which I think running is game. great. Good running game. I think the next game after that would be against the Steelers. Yeah. And I'm looking Super Bowl-wise, and I'm seeing either the Eagles or the Saints. And I think the Saints give the Patriots a little bit more of trouble. Because the yeah. Saints really have taken off ever since they got rid of Adrian Peterson. There you go. Alvin Kamara, the running back, has been He's phenomenal. He's crazy, man. Did you see that leap? Them. Yes, I the did. The leap over that defender He's very talented. against the Rams. And for their Saints team that doesn't have to rely upon an aging Drew Brees, who still is very who's good. Still, yeah, who still can bring you, get you one of those games. They have a good team. They do. But it's a matter of getting past that next hurdle. I just I look at the rest of the competition right now, and... I, the competition is, is not, not up to snuff. Um, hey. This weekend, the Patriots will take on the Buffalo Bills. Are you scared at all about the Bills? Because I'm I, not. I'm scared about the type of game it's going to be. I'm okay. scared that we're going to – I mean, the last game against Miami, you have like, every, there's like 85 stretchers. Just well, like that's the thing, like the well, health that, I was talking yeah. about. Yes, that's right. But Buffalo, it's, it's always going to be – well, Buffalo maybe not so much, but Miami is chippy enough. Yep. You got Sue, you got Wake, everyone just, I mean, I just want Brady out of, just put I, in I, I despise Miami. I think Miami is nothing but a bunch of classless jerks. I think they are jerks. Out in the football field yeah. that belong in a jail cell. But I also think. That's how I feel about Well, National Miami. Felons League, as they yeah, call National it. Yeah, National Felons League. Um, but I do think Miami's talented. It's weird. It, it sucks because Miami is talented. These teams are talented. But they just there's a what focus are they that what's isn't going there. wrong with them then? Maybe a focus isn't, that isn't okay. there, and maybe just they need to take like some sort of yoga or Zen class where they can just center themselves or some BS like that, get themselves really primed to uh, realize what's going on. Maybe a coach who isn't just 
I don't know. I don't know how they're coaching. Well, works. I'm so glad that you just hit the word right there that oh, I was coaching, looking for. I guess, and it yeah. is coaching. The coaching in the NFL, outside of Belichick, I think is atrocious. Who matches up as a great head coach? Comp- eh, You're talking about Belichick. an all-time guy. Versus- Andy Reid? He doesn't know how to time manage anything. He does. Well, yeah, that's that's uh, the biggest knock on him. Besides, you know, his and his Jason, team is in Jason a, Garrett, whatever his name is oh, from Dallas. Oh, the Clapper, as they call him. Oh my! There is not a single coach in the NFL that holds a candle to Belichick. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I could maybe Marone from uh, Jacksonville is doing a good job with that defense. Maybe you could talk about. Uh, from the NFC, who's coaching? See how, how, see how much of a hard time you're already Minnesota? having? There's yeah. no one. But I'm also ignorant of most of the coaches in the NFL anyway. So, I mean, coaching makes a big difference. Yeah, and course. Belichick being as prepared and organized and... Well, his whole staff. Having a plan? Some of these teams don't have a plan. Or they won't Miami scheme. had a plan. Sure. And that went right down the toilet. Well, I mean, the ability to adjust and to kind of scheme per opponent. And I think the Patriots are actually built for... They're not like a... They're not a team that's like, oh, they run. They just run and pass. Patriots or, or have the really ability well, you know what I mean? to adapt to any change. Yeah. To any yeah. opponent. To any opponent. Exactly. But, to, um, yeah. but my biggest fear, like you said, is making sure players stay healthy. The Patriots yeah. lost two guys last weekend because of injury. We have Nate Eb- Ebner out yeah. for on special teams. Um, and we have another one of the linemen, I believe, that's out. One of the flower, uh, flowers. Not Trey, Marquise. It's Trey, 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 Trey Flowers is Trey out. Trey suffered an injury, but so, is he out for this week? And Marquise, think, too. I think that he and might Kyle be Van out Hoy. this week. All right. The Patriots right now, of course, we know is out with Edelman. Out with uh, Edelman. Yep. Bennett's gone for the season. Ben's He's done. Malcolm Mitchell. Malcolm Mitchell is, 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 the, is the guy that I, I'm hoping can come back. because I like him a lot. He could be a big difference he could. in my eyes. Could help out a lot. Him and Brandon Cooks. And yeah. Chris Hogan oh, is going right. to be also yeah. out again this week. And yeah. that injury is becoming more and more... Uh, alarming to me. Was it concussion or what was it? No, a chest? It's the shoulder. Um, it's the shoulder. So I don't know well, if he... Save him for the playoffs. That's what I'm hoping that they can do. My biggest surprise on the season, my mm-hmm. biggest surprise, I have two surprises. Surprise number one is the play of Deion Lewis. Oh, okay. Now... now why is that surprising to you? I, well, at the beginning of the year, he really does wasn't doing much. Okay. He, was, he was getting you know, a little bit, of, little bit of play here and there. But I think ever since Edelman and ever since all these guys went out, you're seeing Dion Lewis get the ball a whole lot more. Do yeah. you like it? I mean, I do, but it's one. Of, it harkens back to that fear of, please don't get injured. <laughs> it's like, please don't get injured. Well, I think we're seeing him fully healthy now. Sure. We're seeing the knee back to full strength. We're seeing him run for long distances now. Because he got injured in long the Super Bowl. Now. Yes, he did. Too, like in right before overtime, actually. One of the, yes, he did. The weirdest like things. Weirdest thing. On the kickoff, right? But I'm, I'm very happy with his performance. And it's, yeah, made it's, me, been great. it's made me look at some things on the Patriots depth chart and say to myself, well, Gillisley, who was brought in, is had been a healthy scratch for five weeks straight. Well, what do you, I mean, he also, he wasn't fumble prone, but he fumbled... No, he wasn't fumble prone, but he, he was basically the Garrett Blunt. But he was pretty good. He, uh, I was actually going to bring him up, and I'm glad you did because I think, don't you think he's due like, either it's healthy scratches or they're just keeping their core deep, and then they'll just kind of let people lose. I, I would love to have Garrett Blunt back. Oh, I meant Gillingsley. Oh, I mean, Gillingsley. I, I don't think that he should start the rest of the season. Really? I really don't because Burkhead is really. Good. Burkhead has really taken on the lead. Oh, they're all really good, though. Burkhead has been somebody that who's been healthy. Finally, his ribs are healthy. I think yeah. he has broken ribs or something oh, like something that in the beginning. Yeah. But he is giving the Patriots some stability there. They've all... The player that I'm, 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 I'm also very surprised with in the run game that hasn't really done much of anything this season is James White. James White hasn't even scored a touchdown this season. He ha- he leads. I dropped uh, him from my fantasy team this week. But he leads, uh, I think, the either receiving core or the actual uh, the receiving and or running back core. He leads in catches, I think. He leads like he's been Brady's binky. It, for the past month, he really hasn't. It's been weird. I, I look back. I would look back at the tape. I think the numbers. But as you're, I mean, you would probably know a little bit more. But I know. It was well. I shouldn't say no. The the platonic like I know nothing, but uh, yeah, I think he has uh, the record. Uh, he had the most receptions now. I think I'll take a look at that. But take, but uh, he hasn't been. Exp- 
like when you see it, it's like, oh, we're also basing it like last year. He didn't have that same kind of impact until like the playoffs or the Super Bowl. And he's like, what option is he? He's like option number like six. I think we should see more him more. Yeah. I think we should see him more. I don't know why Josh McDaniels isn't involving him as much, but hopefully that changes a little I mean, bit, I think. Well, I think you've, you might have answered your own question. I mean, do they need to really break him out? Like, Not really, but I think it would I mean? be nice to see Brady be able to rely upon him when needed. Yeah. I mean, he's a crucial third down guy. Yeah. Crucial. It's my other surprise this season has been Rob Gronkowski. Oh, really? Big time. How so? Mr. Healthy. Oh, well, oh, well, Mr. Enough. Healthy. Well, knock on wood. For knock that. on wood. Yeah. What a difference having Gronk yeah. on the field. Gronk has made a huge difference, both in blocking and with two touchdowns again last week. Yeah. He is definitely surprised me the most because Gronk has always been one of those injury prone guys. He beats, he just gets hurt all the time. And they need to continue to protect him. And make sure mm. that he's set to go because they are going to need him. Well, that's what, should we just not have him play the rest of the Maybe season? Maybe we should just yeah. put him in bubble wrap and Probably, just not yeah. have him. Put him in the refrigerator boy, and keep him fresh. Fridge, boy in the plastic bubble, just yeah. have him out there. I just want to go over a couple things with our, our Boston Red Sox. Oh, sure. As much as we know it's the off season with everything, there's a Christmas list waiting of things that we would love to see happen for them. Sure. So as the hot stove is burning, let's have a discussion about what is on the Christmas list for the Boston Red Sox? Well, I mean, they want Stan. I mean, they that's who they Stan. want. I mean, do you think they'll get him? I think the focus has shifted a little bit. To uh... And I'm shifted a little bit, too. Oh, okay. You... I've shifted to Jose Abreu sure, that's... from the Chicago White Sox. And that's their first I've shifted right? to him because money-wise and financially it makes more sense. Okay. The Red Sox and the White Sox have already done business together. When they got Chris Mankata yeah. with Chris Sale. So the White Sox know the Red Sox system. What's it going to take to get Jose Abreu? You're going to need to give up Andrew Benintendi. Really? You're going to need it. to give up Endeavors, something like that, to get, to get him. Yeah. I do it. I'm sick and tired. Really? I'm sick and tired of not having quality people that are, that are in. I think Jose Abreu is the bat that the Red Sox need. If it's not Jose Abreu, then yes, you need to go and get Stanton, and you need to figure it out financially to see how you can do it. Mm. They cannot go into next season without a big bat in their lineup. They cannot. Mookie Betts is not your cleanup hitter. He's not. See how agitated I get with that? Yeah, you got to calm I'm, down. I know. Yeah, Mookie yeah, Betts is your leadoff well. hitter. But maybe without a buffoon of, as a manager, maybe that'll change. That's my biggest thing that I love the Wait, most. Wait, you're saying he's not a leadoff? No, he's not a cleanup. He's Mookie saying. is not a cleanup hitter. You think he's he a leadoff? He's a leadoff hitter. Mookie exceeded way too many expectations in 2016. You think it was protection from? He was protected because he had Big other Poppy. bats, and David Ortiz yeah. was the reason why Mookie Betts had such a great season. I still think Mookie's really good, and he can I get. I still think um, he is. I think on the team, he's my number one protector. Yeah. You protect him, but. You need to get some thump in your lineup. Yeah. Uh, as another couple things on my wish list that I, I really want to do and see the Red Sox do something with. Um, I want them to trade Jackie Bradley Jr. It's sad. I love the guy. I love the bees. I love the killer bees. I, but... I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> yeah. um, I, I can go get another two, 230 hitter for something why don't, else. Why don't you just, instead of Ben Attendee, why don't you throw uh, Bradley Jr. in there? I, I would. I would do that. The I like White ben Sox Attendee. really like Bradley, and I really think he's going to yeah, be there I heard with that. something. I really do. They really mm. like Bradley. So I, I'm hoping that Bradley goes there. He can take his attitude with him. Does he have a bad attitude? Yes, he does. Yes, he does. And what a lot is... of people don't talk about it. No, I don't. I don't he know. was one of the reasons behind the Dennis Eckersley fight. on that. Fl on the... Really? Jackie well, Bradley, just, Jackie Bradley Jr. is one of the puppets to David Price. Oh, that's weird. And it doesn't seem to me like you're going to be able to get rid of David Price, so you have to work with it. But if you get rid of his puppet masters... Then maybe the team. I think it's better. the other way around. Like Puppet Master would say that he'd be pulling that uh, JBJ was pulling. Oh, the I see what you mean. So he he wasn't pulling. He was his, just more his partner in crime. Partner in crime, or yeah. just kind of a follower, like a little, psychopath. Yeah, they all follow. They're, they're, they're a bunch, the right. followers. Yeah, Puppet Master that David be, Price has around him. Although he could, that would be very interesting. It was just a little silent puller of strings, and could Jackie be. Bradley Jr. is the uh, maestro to his. I mean, ideally, I would love to get rid of David Price. I don't know how you feel about that. Yeah, yeah if you get rid of him, you get rid of him. He's a quality arm when he wants to be. When he and wants to be. I think, you know what, keep him in the bullpen if you want to. 
I just, you can't pay $30 million a season for, a, for him to come in the bullpen. What does that matter? Well, you've already paid for him. And just use him to the best of your ability. At that point, what are you trying to say? You're trying to save face? Is that what you're trying to do? Who cares? Like, that's it's another true. Thing. It's true. It's just financially, I don't see the Red Sox being able to, to do that. You already paid for him. You don't have to pay again. I mean, you just continue. Or the contract is signed, you're going to con- continually pay for him. Whether you think it's a deal or not on what you're getting. Because I do agree with ball. you. He was much better in the playoffs. He was in great. The, in, in the regular season in the bullpen. Yeah. He was. And it, and, it, and it worked much better. But my overall thing in the team is that if you go into the season next year with the team that you have right now, you're going to fail. Um, just quickly as we wrap up the show, I want to just say that the Bruins have been. I know that you're not big into the hockey. No, I think I've read, though. The Bruins are a very surprising team right now. Very surprising. Yeah. And the reason I say it is because the young kids that they have, they're a very young team, really are showing a lot of toughness, a lot of hustle, a lot of great play. Charlie McAvoy, for one, is leading the NHL in minutes. 19 out of the old ice. kid, yeah. Holy moly. Well, I mean, he's young, so you can just... And they're doing it a lot without Tuka Rask, who continues to have a diaper on him. Well, didn't he and have a de- an okay game against Tampa? He just had a good game. He played back-to-back and got a win against the Lightning, so maybe that will continue. But the only way the Bruins are going to do well is if they get some good goaltending, and it's got to start with Tuca, and then Kudobin's got to be doing as good a job as he's doing right now. Sure. So we hope for the best for the Bruins. We hope you continue to watch. Hope you continue to watch Face the Facts, too, because we need your support. We need your viewership as much as possible, too. But, Phil, yeah. any last words? No, just uh, I'm enjoying what I'm what I'm seeing when I watch the Celtics. Yep. Uh, I'm playing. Last year I watched quite a bit, but this year uh, the star power of Kyrie and everything uh, has got me glued. Uh, they're a great team, and they might they seem like they're leveling off a little bit. But you know what? It's still I'll still take it. And uh, Red Sox, we'll see what happens. Winter meetings are. Happening uh, next week. Next that's week. right, next week. And so. that's usually when people when things get actually no, two weeks from now. Two oh, weeks, two weeks. The week of the tenth. Oh well, yeah, it's right before yeah, uh, the holiday season. But I also want to say have a happy holiday season. Yeah, we'll see you before Christmas is gone. We'll definitely yeah. see you then. Um, so for Nick Face and I'm Phil Healy. We will see you next time on another episode of your favorite Face the Facts. See you later.